my case started when four of our family's children were removed from their home after an allegation of neglect was made. The children were placed in foster care and four different family members came forward um, requesting the children. All were denied for different reasons. One was denied because their house was too small. One was denied because their income was too low. Another, they made an allegation that he told one of the children to misbehave at his foster home. And I was denied for living out of state. Um, I have fought a late, lengthy court battle. Um, the court battle is still going on today. Um, the children are in foster care. They were uh, sent up north to live in foster care. In their foster care home, they have experienced um, things like having hot sauce put in their mouths, fish oil made to run laps around the house. They've been slapped. Um, they've had unexplained burns. They've fallen through the ice. They've witnessed their family feeding live rabbits to their dogs. Um, the children um, have been told that their family doesn't love them, doesn't want them. They've been um, told that, they're, that I'm a liar, um, that everything I say is a lie. Um, I even have a recording at one point I was on a visit with the children and I was recording the visit. I stepped out of the room for a moment and the foster care worker, Brooke Bigler, began to question the children when I stepped out of the room. She asked them, why aren't you supposed to be with your grandmother? Why aren't you supposed to be alone with your grandmother? They said, because she tells lies. And at that point, Brooke Bigler said, yes, that's right, you are so smart. And she um, just encouraged them to call their, to say that their grandmother was a liar. Um, they have tried to prevent, Holy Cross Children's Services has tried to prevent all contact with any family from the beginning. Um, as soon as the kids went into foster care, I tried to have contact. I was told there was no way I could see them. Um, I had to talk to supervisors, call DHS. I finally got um, one visit where I was able to see them for two hours supervised at a McDonald's. Then I um, tried to get telephone visits since I live out of state. I was denied telephone visits. Um, they, I was told that they needed a release from DHS in order to give me telephone visits. I said, well then, you know, send them the release. And when you send them the release, could you please send me a copy of the release you're sending them so I can see what it is you're sending? Well, we cannot send that release to you unless we have another release. So a couple days later, I kept calling every day. Um, a couple days later, the release had been sent. They did say I could have phone visits. Um, so I called back, I said, uh, I called back, I said, who is specifically did you send that release to? Sharon Scott. I called Sharon Scott, I said, did you get the release? She said, no. I said, well, they said they needed a release for me to uh, have phone visits. She said she never heard such a thing. I said, so you never got a release and you never signed it and sent it back? No. It was just another one of their delay tactics to keep me from having visits. Um, but I had made enough complaints to the point where they had to let me do that. So then I got my first phone visit. The kids got on the phone very excited to speak to me. The first kid gets on the phone. He immediately says, I want to come to Florida and live with you. Immediately the caseworker takes away the phone, says you are not allowed to talk about the case. You're not allowed to say that to your grandmother. If you talk about anything like that again, your phone calls will be terminated. You'll never be al allowed to talk to the kids again. So after that, the kids all got on very quietly. Each said a few words to me, didn't say too much after that. My next phone visit, the kids wouldn't talk. 
One of the kids got on the phone. They said, we got in trouble. We were punished last time. So nobody wants to talk. I said, OK. I went to court. Um, eventually got to have visits ordered. Even then, they continued to obstruct visits by giving excuses. One, vis one visit, I couldn't have my visit because it was bath time. Another visit, the pa foster parents were going to a sports event with their children. Um, another one, it was prom it, with their other children. It, it was always something, a doctor's appointment, every, anything they could to prevent visits. Um, they'd schedule them for days I, they knew I had to work. Um, then I'd take a break. I'd tell them what time I could have a, I took my break. We'd try to schedule it then. Then they'd say, oh, well, I'm running late. I can't make it at that time. Um, and that's how it went. Um, eventually, the children's parents were still working on reunification. They kept telling me I can't have the kids because I'm in another state. Their mother even went as far as to say, I'll move to the other state if you let the grandmother take the kids. They said no. They wouldn't allow that. Um, I finally um, did hire my own attorney to start pursuing it. Um, they were going to go for a guardianship, which would mean the parents didn't lose rights because that was the type of guardianship they had. There's two types. I didn't know anything really about the other type. It was new. We uh, went, they went to court um, at the beginning of a termination trial for their mother. They suddenly changed what was going on. Um, they said there's a new type of guardianship. You can only get guardianship if the mother agrees to terminate her rights. They took the mother back in, in, a, in a little room. They talked to her. They said, look, we're going to give your, we're going to give the grandmother two-week visit in Florida. We're going to let the kids go there for two weeks. If everything goes well, there's no problems with her background check. There's no problems with anything. We're going to do the guardianship trial when they come back, and she'll get to take them. But you need to sign off your rights, because for this type of guardianship, you cannot have any rights. So she agreed to sign off her rights. What she didn't know is they told her she needed to go into court and plead no contest when she was signing off her rights. They're two different things. She didn't know that either. Um, her attorney didn't advise her that that was different. She thought she was signing off her rights. She went into court, pled no contest. Right after they di terminated her rights, they refused the visit. The judge changed the order, signed a different order. Um, we proceeded with the guardianship trial. I had to get a, um, the kids a psych eval to prove that the children wouldn't be traumatized to come and visit me. Um, eventually, they did come to visit me. They were overjoyed to be there. Um, we had two visits in Florida that lasted a little over a week. And they were sent back. When they went back, the children were very upset. Um, one of them, two of the kids were up all night. One of them was sick to her stomach the night before. They didn't want to go. Um, it was very traumatic for him to have to leave. Um, the kids wanted to stay. They had a great time. They really enjoyed it. Um, I did everything they asked me to do. I got licensed for foster care. I bought a larger home. I did everything they asked me to do, but nothing I did was good enough. Nothing I did would allow the children to come to live with me. Um, during the hearings for their mother, they would, they had continually investigated her. Um, there was never any abuse that was ever substantiated. Um, they did substantiate neglect, um, stating that one of the kids had scabies for two months, but no other household members had it. So he had it for two months prior to his removal, yet no one else caught it. 
They said the kids had such bad teeth that they required dental surgery, yet the dental surgery happened eight months after they were taken. Um, the kids w did have, um, when they were born, two of the kids had a congenital condition that the doctor told her the children never would form proper enamel, at least on their baby teeth, and they weren't sure about adult teeth. So they did expect to have bad teeth.